Winds and currents. A lot of times we see word problems that involve wind speed and current speed, and it's really important to be able to identify these early on. If we see wording like with the wind and against the wind, or with the current and against the current, then we know there's a certain model that we're going to follow for our rate. And that has to do with establishing a still air speed and a wind speed that are independent variables, or in the case of a boat, maybe a still water speed and a current speed that are independent variables. The way this generally works is that we think of S as being the still air speed of the plane. That is the hypothetical speed that this particular airplane with this particular pilot would be going if there were no wind. The wind speed then is the speed of the wind that is either speeding up or slowing down the plane depending on which direction we're going. So if the wind is blowing in a particular direction, then when we're going with the wind, it speeds us up, and the actual speed of the plane is S plus W. If we are going against the wind, the wind speeds us down, and the actual speed of the plane is S minus W. So we're going to use this for our rate column, but we need to read carefully to see if one of these variables we already know. It's not always the same variable, so we do need to be very cautious in these problems. This says a wind speed of 50 miles per hour, meaning that in this particular case, W is not a variable. W is known, it is 50. But S is a variable. We're asked at the end of the problem, what is the still air speed of the plane? So that means that we will leave S as a variable and for our rate column with the wind, I'm going to put S plus 50 and S minus 50 for with the wind and against the wind, respectively. All right, now we'll pick out some of the other easier information from this problem. 600 miles, that sounds like a distance. 400 miles, that's another distance. Making sure we put these in the correct rows with the wind is 600 miles, against the wind is 400 miles as a distance. So now we're down to one column remaining, and generally the way we finish these problems and fill in the last column is we use some version of the relationship distance equals rate times time. In this particular case, we are interested in filling in the time column, so I would have to solve this for t to see what that would equal, and it looks like that tells me that time is equal to distance divided by rate. So if I have an expression for my distance and an expression for my rate, I can get an expression for my time by making a ratio or a quotient out of the two. 600 divided by s plus 50 and 400 divided by s minus 50. Be cautious with your s's and 5's. Sometimes 5's and s's look kind of similar if you're writing quickly and not being cautious about it. I like to try to make my s's look a little bit fancy just to avoid that. Now that our table is filled in, we're ready to make the equation, and this is where the part of the word problem that refers to the times becomes relevant. This says same amount of time. That means that in order to set up my equation, I should set the times equal to each other. Or set time 1 equal to time 2. We'll just call this let set time equal to time. So that means 600 divided by s plus 50 equals 400 divided by s minus 50 is my equation. Time of the plane going with the wind equals time of the plane going against the wind. Now since this is a proportion, this is a simple equation of the, of the form fraction equals fraction, I can cross multiply to solve it. 
this will actually be a fairly quick equation to solve. Remember that cross multiplying means that we will take the numerator of one side and multiply it by the denominator of the other side and then vice versa for the others, right? I'll take my 400 and multiply it by s plus 50. Make sure to multiply by the whole thing using parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and take this through all the way to the solution because solving this equation is generally not the main point of a word problem, but you're welcome to pause the video and look through those steps or pause it and try it yourself now before the solution appears. So I get s equals 250 as my solution to the equation. And it's always good now to look back at the question and look back at the variable definition and see if this is the answer that we're looking for or if we need to plug it back in somewhere. Sure enough, s is the still air speed of the plane. And we are asked, what is the speed of the plane in still air? So s is exactly the answer that we want. So I'm going to just express this with units 250 miles per hour.